Good evening and welcome to the last in this present series and with it excitingly poised at five games to two to Paul, Ian has only to win tonight to achieve a vital 5-3 defeat. <laughs> uh, in the news this week, as Buckingham Palace prepares to welcome tourists for the first time, the finishing touches are put to the new look Trooping of the Colour. <laughs> On a Luton housing estate, local residents say that joyriders have definitely gone too far this time. <laughs> and in London, as Norman Lamont ties a rope around his neck in a fit of depression, fellow Conservatives rush to his assistance. <laughs> <laughs> On uh, Ian Hislop's team, a man who I recently learned represented the United Kingdom at judo, so I'd like to offer him my congratulations now on winning tonight's game and anything else he'd like, Tony Slattery. <laughs> and uh, with Paul Merton this week, we were hoping to be joined by the Right Honourable Roy Hattersley, but sadly, and for the third time in our brief history, he's pulled out at the last minute due to having something better to do. So, uh, as his replacement, liable to give much the same performance, and imbued with many of the same qualities, we're delighted to welcome a tub of lard. <laughs> so, we... Uh, We um, scream hysterically into round one. Two pieces of mute news per team to which they have to provide the accompanying soundtrack. Ian and Tony, a couple of swells for you. Oh, oily twat. <laughs> <laughs> this is a story about Michael Mates, which is a very good name for a prick in a cover up. <laughs> <laughs> He's a senior Conservative minister, so obviously he starts giving presents to men who are um, being charged with serious uh, theft offences. It's the natural thing you do. And on the back of the watch he gives the man, it says, don't let the buggers get you down. The buggers being serious law enforcement officers <laughs> who are trying to stop people stealing money. And they do get you down if you're a major crook. Because they try and arrest you. And you end up having to flee the country. Uh, it is the revelation that Government Minister Michael Mates uh, presented Azil Nadir with uh, an inscribed watch shortly before the disgraced tycoon fled to Cyprus. Nadir's own watch had been confiscated by bailiffs and Mates said he only gave him the replacement so Nadir could keep time. That's as opposed to serving it, presumably. <laughs> uh, Paul and the tube of lard, or indeed tub of lard. <laughs> Shouldn't it be the tub of lard and the other tub of lard? <laughs> uh, Paul and the tub of lard, uh, what's the story behind this piece of film? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the, um, this is the uh, story of the uh, New Age... Uh, Travellers blocking the uh, M1 with, I'm sorry, the M5. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything else to add? Does, does Ask the him. <laughs> uh, yes, it's uh, it's the hippie convoy. You're right, both of you, that uh, deliberately paralysed <laughs> the M5 on the bank holiday weekend. Uh, the chief constable of Avon and Somerset so the hip said the hippies had no right to block the motorway like that. That was the job of the police cone laying department. Uh, Ian and Tony, a heart-rending story for you. That's the mm -hmm. Lloyd's building. It's a speciality prostitute. <laughs> Um, oh my god, it's Mary Archie, you shouldn't, I shouldn't really say that then. <laughs> oh dear. And that was Jeffrey Archer has just given her £5,000. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he couldn't have done because he's met her, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not at a railway station. <laughs> mm. Well, this is a very, very sad story indeed. Mm. Um, a number of Conservative <laughs> MPs uh, <laughs> have been wiped out by their losses at Lloyd's. Um, which is very sad. Yes. And the, the toughest thing is if, if, you're, if you are wiped out, you have to go to the hardship committee, which involves seeing Mary Archer. 
Oh, that is hard. <laughs> that's, that's horrible. It is true, yes. It's, um, the news that a number of High Court judges and Tory MPs may have to resign if they're bankrupted by their losses at uh, Lloyd's Insurance. One Lloyd's name, Judge Barrington Ward, uh, lost a quarter of a million pounds. That was a bit short-sighted. Should have insured against it. The, uh, <laughs> the affected judges are now demanding to be let off their debts. The government say the only people qualified to decide if that's permissible are judges. So, uh, no rats to be smelt there. <laughs> uh, Paul and the tub of lard. Bit uh, formal. Yeah. Can't we call him Tubby? Tubby. <laughs> okay, Paul and Tubby. Uh, <laughs> name Mr. Lard to you. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Viscount. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Lord Lard. Uh, a name from the past for you. Uh, yes, Winston Churchill. Um, <laughs> visit <laughs> <laughs> visiting the Tubber Lard Clinic. Uh, <laughs> Winston Churchill said that yeah. some cities had 50% immigrant population, Correct. and it's not true. No, it's, it's not true. It's only about sort of 10% or something. Yes, well, it was. It was Winston Bad Churchill. Bad called Winston Churchill, isn't it? Mm. Come out with a crummy speech on immigration. We shall fight them on the barges. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. All right, forget it. Mm. <laughs> I think forgot. we're getting more value out of the tub of lard. <laughs> <laughs> it is Winston Churchill MP who uh, said in a speech that immigrants make up 50% of the population of some cities, whereas in fact uh, it's uh, no more than 17%. Baroness uh, Srila Flather hit back, claiming what he is saying is that he doesn't like brown faces. Well, he'll never make a cabinet minister. <laughs> 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 which uh, unerring accuracy brings us full train to the end of this opening stanza <laughs> and the naked truth at this stage is that uh, both Ian and Tony and Paul and the tub of lard have a small but ample four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now ladies and gentlemen we turn to Michael Winner's underpants. Uh, two weeks ago, in our Odd One Out round, whilst referring to Miss Simone Hyams making love to the film director, Mr. Michael Winner, we alleged Miss Hyams said Mr. Winner's wife runs were unwashed. We accept Miss Hyams uh, did not say this. We would like to emphasise that Mr. Winner's underpant hygiene is of the very highest calibre. <laughs> <laughs> but when she said they were unwashed, they just might have been new. That's true. <laughs> That's, that's doubtless the case, I think. I don't think you should apologise. I think we should go to trial and see if the underpants stand up in court. <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, which, of course, they wouldn't, because they're unblemished. Yeah. <laughs> so it's time to shake our uh, second round warmly by the throat as we ask each panellist to explain some cryptic illusion from the tabloids. Paul, what scam is this? Just holding hands wasn't enough for Jackie. Uh, this is the sad demise of Jackie magazine, which has been running for many years. Um, and it's had to stop publishing because it hasn't, its uh, photo stories or whatever just aren't strong enough. You mean dirty enough? <laughs> yes, it's been re reinvented and it's going to be called Teenage Death Shag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Could happen. It could, could happen, happen. Could it probably happen. has. Yes, it probably will do. Uh, Jackie is famous for passing on crucial tips to countless teenagers, such as how to practice your first French kiss on a pillow instead of a boy's tongue. <laughs> Although uh, any girl who can get a pillow into her mouth wouldn't need any tuition. <laughs> <laughs> One of its pitfalls was that, unlike its rivals, it never had to deal with real-life issues, such as how to put on a condom, unless you wanted to know how to put a condom on a pillow, presumably. <laughs> Uh, one of Jackie's rivals, Miz, this month goes into detail... Well, you get a condom over a pillow. It's a very good point and well made, I think. Thank you. <laughs> I bet the tub of lard put you onto that yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, if you had a tub of lard, you could put a condom on a pillow. <laughs> Tub of lard, a curious claim for you. No conferring. Uh, <laughs> sex, beer and neat moustaches solve riddle of the pyramids. Well, since he can't do it, I think... Hang on a minute! <laughs> I haven't given him a He's chance He's only just yet. seen it. He <laughs> can't see the monitor from there anyway, look. <laughs> 
No, I don't think he's going to get it, Ian. You better help us Is out. Is this the... Um, all right, go on. Um, the fact that they've discovered that the pyramids weren't built by slaves at all, but were built by people who wanted to build the pyramids, who were sort of builders, more or less. And um, <laughs> they, they had sex, beer, and neat moustaches. Is it something to do with mummies and uh, esophaguses? No, <laughs> that's a part of the fruit. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> they, they found... Sarcophaguses, sorry. <laughs> sorry. The queen I mummy got something stuck in her throat. <laughs> a pillow, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> might have been a tub of lard, you don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to give you two points. It's, it's completely right. It's the discovery that the pyramids were built, uh, not by slaves, but by professional builders. Uh, the work took 70 years, although the original estimate said they'd be out in five <laughs> weeks. <laughs> Tony, score for team, then score with my missus. Oh, yes, I read this. This is an American uh, football uh, team, and the coach of this team gave his teenage players an incentive that if they did, sim very simple really, if they did well, they could shag his wife. Yeah. But apparently, no, there was a sliding scale, if that's the way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> back, to, back to Lard again. Um, I think you've the, put um, it, yes. You know, if, if, if they scored uh, one point or whatever, they got oral sex, it was all rather, all rather saucy, really. <laughs> Uh, yes, it is. Uh, it's um, American football coach Randy Brown, who's uh, been on... No, no, that wasn't his name. <laughs> it, wasn't. it wasn't. Randy Brown, no. who's, uh, he's been on trial with his wife in California after offering her as an incentive to his underage team. A good pass was rewarded with a kiss, a vital tackle was rewarded with oral sex, and every goal was rewarded with full sex. Just as well they don't have penalty shootouts in American football. <laughs> what about the goalkeeper? He didn't get much of a look in, I'm afraid. No. <laughs> what, uh, what, what do you mean by vital tackle? <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you mean what very energetic? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, something along those <laughs> sorts of lines, yes. Uh, they've both been on trial anyway, and Mrs. Brown's now gone down for five years. <laughs> <laughs> so no change there. And finally, Ian, one man's fight for justice. Just the ticket for revenge. I think this is the Hoover story. Might be. <laughs> There's a, a man who's kidnapped the Hoover van. He was, one of, he was one of those people who joined a competition where um, you were meant to get free flights if you bought a Hoover. And he didn't get any. And he was so annoyed that he kidnapped the van. And he said to Hoover, if you don't give me the tickets, I'm going to keep this van. So fly me to Barbados or the van gets it. <laughs> It's uh, engineer David Dixon of Seaton, Cumbria, who uh, bought a washing machine from Hoover in order to take advantage of their free flight offer. Uh, Hoover wouldn't cough up the tickets and the washing machine broke down, so Mr Dixon has kidnapped the Hoover repair van that came round to fix it until he gets his tickets. The washing machine in question has started moving all over the kitchen of his own accord, knowing Hoover the quickest way he'll get to America is to sit on it and point it west. <laughs> Which further instalment of uh, the Hoover saga heralds the end of this uh, middling round and the story so far is that, uh, rather intriguingly, neither side is prepared to break from the pack, both Ian and Tony and Paul in the tub of lard, uh, settling for an equivalent eight. So with customary reticence, we enter our trifling odd one out round for national heroes, which is the Graham Taylor. Paul, <laughs> uh, your hideous concoction is uh, Sir David Frost, mm -hmm. Virginia Wade, lovely, the Bishop of Galway, gorgeous as well, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> someone else. Virginia Wade's the only one who's been hit recently hit in the nose by a tennis ball. <laughs> um, <laughs> David Frost has had his fingers super glued to plate and cup. Um, <laughs> the tub of luck, the Roy Hattersley, <laughs> uh, Bishop of Galway. Um, it's fathers. David Frost's father was a priest. And Roy Hattersley's father was a priest. Um, <laughs> and... Virginia Wade's father was a priest. Perfect answer. It is that each one is the child of a clergyman, except the Bishop of Galway, who's a clergyman with a child. Uh, before the scandal broke, the bishop was quoted as saying, the things you do in life are not meant to bear fruit in your lifetime. <laughs> not if you're a Roman Catholic priest, they're not. And Roy Hattersley's father was a Roman Catholic priest. Uh, they, as we know, take lifelong vows of celibacy. If only he'd stuck to his. Uh, so, a tub of lard, a rather easy one for you. 
uh, Princess Diana, Scylla Black, Barry Manilow, and Pinocchio. <laughs> Is it Barry Manilow? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oddly. What's the... Um, what's nose the jobs. Scylla Black's had a nose job, uh, and all the others have had nose jobs, apart from Barry Manilow, who clearly wouldn't have paid money for that. <laughs> It's another two points to, uh, <laughs> to the tub, tub. Hard, yes. Oh, yes, and Paul. Um, Are you saying Princess Diana's had a nose job? We might be. Can you prove that? We might be about to be proving it to you <laughs> with some photographs. Good. Can you wait? Well, I hope that stands up and cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the photos look a bit like it. Yeah, we mm. tried that one. No, it's a cheap... About half a million. We're not actually saying it. Uh, we're we're alleging, alleging that the uh, Daily Star said that they had. Oh, she that's had brave one. of you. Mm. <laughs> uh, it's that they've all had nose jobs, with uh, the sole exception of Barry Manilow, as he can't afford the scaffolding costs. <laughs> um, Scylla Black's nose is 25 years old. She's 50 years old, and her jokes on blind date are 75 years old. Uh, Pinocchio is famous for his wooden nose, which got longer and longer every time he told a lie. We understand the government's arms to Iraq inquiry has a carpenter on permanent standby. In 1982, <laughs> Diana disappeared from public view for three three months and came back, according to top plastic surgeon Eric Jackson, uh, with a reshaped nose. Here's before and after. Diana's always uh, denied it, but unlike Pinocchio, her nose seems to have got smaller rather than well, larger. Well, conclusive. In one picture she's looking down, in the <laughs> next one she's looking up. I reckon the Daily Star's made its case pretty well. Are you poo-pooing this in? Are you um, standing up for the princess sounds here? like a winner joke. Um, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm standing up for the princess. Oh, good. More than Charles ever did. <laughs> In bed, anyway. Mm, allegedly. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> just nonsense. Why would he stand up in bed? <laughs> National Anthem might be playing on the radio. <laughs> he might have a tub of lard, Andy, you never know. <laughs> Tony, four paragons of virtue for you. Uh, Her Majesty the Queen. Uh, Cynthia Payne. Madonna. And Lord Bath, formerly Viscount Weymouth. <laughs> Goodness, is it something to do? Is it is it uh, something to do with baths? No. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Is it beds? Beds. Um, not entirely. No. <laughs> we just came through the whole house now. Yeah. <laughs> is it? <laughs> is it, is it Hoover's? Beginning with B. No. <laughs> is it that um, the Queen and whatever his name is and Cynthia Payne have um, opened their houses to the public? And Madonna has opened um, <laughs> her heart. Um, irritatingly, it's completely correct. Yes. Yeah, well <laughs> no. Well done. <laughs> yes. Uh, apart from the heart bit, uh, the answer is that uh, all of their homes are or have been open to the public, except Madonna, who this week discovered that security guards had been charging members of the public a hundred dollars a time to have sex in her bedroom. She was furious when she found out complete strangers had been doing it in her bed. She'd known she'd have set the video running. <laughs> and, uh, and finally in this round, Ian. Four cheeky chappies for you. Saddam Hussein. Pol Pot. Deng Xiaoping. Oh, I get the light-hearted one, do I? Bosnian President Alia Izidbegovic. Um, I think this is a, a, an arms question. It's, uh, I mean, there are three of these people who are extremely unpleasant dictators. <coughs> Pol Pot, Saddam Hussein, Deng Xiaoping. That chap's the president of Bosnia, and he's not. So, which three have our government supplied arms to? <laughs> and which one have we refused? <laughs> yep, it's Mr. Bosnia. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, the president of Bosnia, as he's the only one whom the British government feels it would be morally wrong to give military assistance to. In the past five years, the UK has trained and armed more than half the world's countries, uh, keeping up the traditional British values of hard work, fair play, and sending Johnny Foreigner off to an early grave. <laughs> the, uh, the cases of Saddam Hussein and the butcher of Tiananmen Square, Deng Xiaoping, are well documented. Uh, less well known is the fact that the Khmer Rouge-led coalition, which uh, maimed so many women and children with landmines that Cambodia's medical system has collapsed, has been trained to do so by instructors from the SAS and MI6. Uh, the 
government has denied that the British military uh, directly trained the Khmer Rouge. They say our troops were training a totally different set of guerrillas to maim civilians who just happened to come under the direction of the Khmer Rouge. So that's all right then. <laughs> uh, rule Britannia, Britain never, never, never shall own up to anything if we can get away with it. Uh, all of which military madness uh, marks an end to this exhausting exercise and the current enthralling situation is that, uh, well, Ian and Tony have a slightly poor 10 and Paul and Tub of Lard have a virtually impressive 14. <laughs> And so, after that gruelling tussle, our four trusty panellists have now to tackle our final missing words round. Ian and Tony, entirely human teams first, so stand by your beds. Uh, Major eases what? Himself into Lamont's welcoming buttocks. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I know it's, it's not... <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds like a pub somewhere in the countryside. <laughs> the welcoming buttocks. Mm. <laughs> Welcomes careful drivers. <laughs> I know. Uh, you take access, of course, sir. <laughs> I know it's not satire, it's, but it's just quite a funny image. It's a it? hideous image. Is it the pain? It is the pain. Extraordinary, you should say that. Major uh, uses the pain of what? Correct. Uh, no one knows. <laughs> uh, next, uh, Diana tells of pain caused by what? I know this, and I'm not going to... To tell. To t <laughs> <laughs> it's a pill for every ill. Is absolutely correct. Astonishing. Uh, this has never happened before. Um, <laughs> next, Mary Archer saves what? Bogies for later. <laughs> <laughs> Major's so neck reputation. Major's neck is, is spot on again. Major? Uh, Paul's been top, a spot. He, he is, actually. Uh, top judges face huge bills over what? Is uh, it a giant duck case? <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd's losses, this one. It is Lloyd's losses. And, uh, and lastly, Brilliant. can we get five out of five? Lamont, ready to rattle what at Major? Thresh a bag full of empty <laughs> bottles. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's what Tony says, it's welcome in buttocks. <laughs> <laughs> you can't rattle buttocks, can you? <laughs> Depends where he keeps his change. <laughs> Well, like the Romans used to keep it in their mouth, didn't they? Yeah, yes. Well. All right, thank you. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll have done with this uh, one. Ready to rattle... Um, Skeletons. Is right. Well, well done. Very good indeed. In closet. Thank you. So, um, Paul and the Tub of Lard, uh, here are your headlines, which, uh, as it's our last show, have something of an international flavour. Uh, Monsieur Clinton, sa prêtre de changer what? <laughs> Right, well, bearing in mind that I did metal work. <laughs> right, Miss, uh, yep. M. Monsieur Clinton. So, rat, what does that sound like? So, rat, don't know what that is. Not changes the. Uh, Mr. Uh, is it um, di um, Director of Media Communications? No, it's Monsieur Clinton s'apprêterait à changer de underpants. <laughs> oui, oui, Monsieur Clinton s'apprêterait à changer des pantalons pristinement blancs. De Michael Winner. <laughs> That's allegedly. Um, allegement. If anyone's interested, I can make a trowel. <laughs> is it a uh, director of. Yes, Medi yes, your director de la personnel. communication is mm. absolutely oh, right. Um, I next, think we got uh, that. We got that. Die Bank von England gibt grosser what, Sue? Well, uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is it not? a... <laughs> <laughs> Angus, what? I know this. Yeah, we know what? this. I know this. Die Bank von England gibt grosser Stinkpansen. <laughs> Der britische <laughs> Filmendirektor. <laughs> and, and, and his wife, Sue. <laughs> Grosser amounts of money to fat bundes bankers. Uh, nine, it's, uh, besorgnis. It's the, uh... Is Bless the, you. <laughs> amazed you didn't I'm not, get... I'm, a, I'm not in one of no. John Simpson's trips. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here with a tub of lard trying to answer questions in German. <laughs> Well, we shan't ask another one in German. Well, good. Next, what cap oh, symbol? Yeah, <laughs> 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 
Yarotsky is our CE. Well, it's not Michael Winner, because the second word's cack, look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some of those letters are upside down, look. <laughs> They like it like that. What's that one at the end? It looks like a sort of seagull flying on. Look. <laughs> it's Russian. That's an A. Oh, it's Russian. Oh, I do beg your it's, pardon. It's Russian. Is, no, it, is, allowed to do is that. it Yeltsin? Yeltsin? Uh, no. Is it Yeltsin? <laughs> <laughs> what? I must have been off sick the day we did this at school. <laughs> it's uh, Yelt Yeltsin. Is it is but Tubber Lard's no bloody good, look. <laughs> This is made in the EEC here. I've not had a word out of it. <laughs> is it. Is it perestroika or something? Or uh, something it's like nothing that? even Big Mac, like that. potato. It's, it's slightly closer to home. It's actually Lord Owen. It's, no. Uh, <laughs> next up is... Oh. <laughs> Rocky Hall. Can I say Q or what? Is it bean fried rice? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually... It's Gary Rineker. Sairitsu is actually the answer I was looking for. Uh, which what, means what, what, what does that word mean? Labour standard law. Oh, of course. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and finally, what? <laughs> uh, fish found on moon, antelope on bicycle, <laughs> potato cures boredness, <laughs> claims mad vicar. Um, is it TV's Angus shagging Merton's wife? <laughs> but it's close. It's actually DLT quits Radio 1. So no, you say it. It's obvious, isn't it? <laughs> <I know. laughs> Which valiant attempts at linguistic competence is winging our way to the end of this round programme and indeed series. And the final showdown seems to have ended with the hardly satisfactory conclusion that this week's down and outs are Ian and Tony with 16. And this week's upwardly mobiles are Paul and the Tub of Lard with 20. is getting rather sad when I can't, <laughs> I can't win against Paul when he's accompanied by a tub of lard <laughs> and the <laughs> questions are in a foreign language. <laughs> we, we did everything we could, Ian. But, uh, I feel like Graham Taylor. <laughs> On which uh, erudite note, we say thank you to our guests, Ian Hislop and Tony Slattery, Paul Merton and the Tub of Lard, whom we wish well in its new job as presenter of Holiday 93. <laughs> and uh, I leave you with news that uh, at the British end of the Channel Tunnel, there are fears that the new rolling stock may leave something to be desired. <laughs> Across the Atlantic, Bolivian television unveils one of the team captains for the South American version of Call My Bluff. <laughs> And finally, Virginia Bottomley performs her famous shadow puppet of a Thai prostitute. <laughs> Good night.